Our Bible word is Psalm 1 verses 1 to 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So this is Psalm 1. And if we look at the Psalms generally, there's, most Psalms are Psalms of lament, where people come to God crying for help and deliverance. There are also Psalms of praise, where God is praised as King, or also the help that has been experienced. But there's also a third category of Psalms that we find is Wisdom Psalms. And Psalm 1 is a Wisdom Psalm. You can also look at Psalms 32 and 34 and 49 and many others. And they reflect wisdom literature, especially the book of Proverbs. The language of Proverbs you find in the wisdom psalms also, in the book of Psalms. So this wisdom psalm, whenever the compiler or editor put all the psalms together, he decided this must go first. So it doesn't mean this was the first psalm written. It was compiled all the psalms together as a book, so to speak. Maybe about three or 400 BC, we cannot be sure. He said, no, this psalm goes first. And it's, so the psalms as a whole, it now introduces it as also part of God's wisdom. And often it was seen together with Psalm 2. It was often seen together as one psalm, where Psalm 1 was approached God and the psalms from wisdom. Psalm 2 gives a prophetic approach because Psalm 2 is, is more prophetic in nature. So this is a wisdom psalm. If you look at its structure, it's like the first three verses is about the solid foundation of the righteous. And then verses 4 to 5 is about the temporary nature of the wicked. And the last verse is about the contrast of the righteous and the wicked. So let's first look at the solid foundation of the righteous. Verses 1 to 3. And it begins with a beatitude. So blessed or happy are those who are addressed. And first is, if we look at our Bible word, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. If we look at these three statements, they actually make synonymous statements. And it's also a typical thing you found in the book of Proverbs. If you go read the book of Proverbs, often you found the same thing said in two different ways. Yeah, it's the same thing that's said in three different ways. If you look there, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Second way, nor stands in the path of the sinners. Thirdly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. In other words, is they avoid evil company. They don't keep company with evil people. So it's just three different ways of saying the same thing. So that's the negative part of it. In other words, what they must not do. But now they do something positive, And that's verses 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. In other words, the law of God fills their heart with joy. They delight in it. It's what makes them happy. Now, of course the word law... It's a bit misleading because the Hebrew Torah, it actually means instruction. In other words, those that live by the instruction of the Lord. If they are, I mean, they take delight in it. In other words, the righteous take delight in the instruction of the Lord. Which narrowly refers to the law, the first five books of Moses, but also whatever commandments and teachings God gives, they take delight in it. And very importantly, they also meditate on it. In other words, they make quiet time to think about God's instructions to them and what God expects of them. Even today, we live in busy lives. We hardly think about important things. We just go from one thing to the next. But the righteous meditate. They engage themselves with the instruction of the Lord. And they think on it. And they ponder it and they discover the deeper meaning of it. And of course it fills their, their life and their soul with delight as they work with it. Because they also discover that this is the truth. 
And he also compares, what are these pe the righteous people like that the instruction of God fills them with delight, etc. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And yeah, we're speaking of a natural consequence. If a tree is planted by waters, it will automatically flourish. In a similar sense, the psalmist says, if you delight in God's law and you meditate on it, by a natural consequence, by itself, you will flourish as a person. You will do good. Of course, there's also other psalms that question this paradigm. Also the book of Job. Because Proverbs, together with this psalm would agree, if you obey God's law, you will do well, you will do, you'll do prosper. Go read Proverbs 3 verses 1 to 2. Things will go well with you. But of course, there's also other psalms that question this. Also the book of Job. Because many times the righteous, they suffer. And, and it's the wicked that prosper. But here for this psalm, the promise is given. You know, if you delight in the God's law, and etc., you will do well. You will be like this tree planted by the river. As a natural consequence, your life will flourish. Now the next two verses, that is the temporary nature of the wicked. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Of course, for the farmers of the time, after harvest time, they would take the harvest to the threshing floor. The oxen will run or walk over it so they can thresh it. And then the farmer will come and take a pitchfork and he will lift it up and the chaff, the light stuff will be blown away. In other words, the things that, that don't have substance, the things that are meaningless, that adds no value, it's blown away. But the things of substance and what has meaning, it will fall down. In other words, the, the wheat, the grain. So the wicked are like this chaff. It will blow away in the wind because they don't have substance. It also says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. In other words, when it comes to important areas of human activity, for example, where judgments must be made, decisions must be made, that's the pursuit of justice. This is where the wicked have no place. Because they can't give a righteous judgment. They are of little, they lightweight, or they have no weight. They are of no consequence, because they like the chaff that's driven away. It's a people of substance. They are the ones who will make just decisions. And they, they are the ones who will make the important decisions, not the wicked ones. And then the last verse is about the contrast of the righteous and the wicked. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So that's another way of saying God knows the way. It's a way that will remain. It's a way that's true. But the ways of the wicked, those lightweight people who contribute nothing, little of substance, their ways eventually will perish. You will see them no more. So this is a wisdom psalm. Take delight in the Lord's instruction, in His law. You will be like a tree planted by the river. As a natural consequence, your life will flourish. Even in the long term, your way will remain. But the way of the wicked, it will perish. It will no longer be seen.